Hello again. My name is Michael Steele. I'm one of the teachers in the Accelerated Math 3 um, cluster for this coming school year. And I'm here to work through more questions, more problems from the Essential Skills Quiz model for Math 3. So in this case, we're going to be focusing on the topic of common bases. And as with the other videos in this series, my goal is pretty simple. I'm going to do the problems and work through them authentically while talking about sort of the concepts, ideas, and strategies that you're using for each one. So without further ado, let's jump right in. So in this video, as I mentioned, we're going to be using the common basis strategy to solve what are exponential equations. Now, don't let the name intimidate you. In reality, all we're using here are exponent rules or exponent properties that will allow us to transform this into a very simple equation. Now, in the future, we'll be able to solve all kinds of exponential equations using a fairly intimidating sounding concept called logarithms. But for now, we're just going to try to transform these so that they have the same base. The idea being if two different numbers or two different expressions have the same base, then we can set their powers equal to each other. So here's what we got. We have, for instance, 16 to the x equals 32. And what I'm thinking to myself as I get started here, and what's going to allow us to use this common basis strategy, is the fact that 16 is equal to 2 to the fourth power and 32 is equal to 2 to the fifth power. Now that's super essential because they have the same base. In other words, they have common bases, meaning that we can rewrite these as 2 to some power equals 2 to some power, and then we can set the powers equal to each other. So here we go, that's exactly where I'm gonna start. So first of all, we have 16 to the x, and we're gonna write that 16, as we said, as 2 to the fourth. And then on that right side, we said 32 is 2 to the fifth. So now we're not quite ready to do anything just yet. Yes, we have common bases, but we need to now use one of the exponent rules. So in here we have two to the four to the x. We're gonna use the power to a power property. Um, depends on how, where you learned it or how it was written. I always was told that it was x to the m to the n is equal to x to the m times n. But you can probably think about it just as simply as something like this. x to the sixth to the seventh is like saying, let's multiply x to the sixth by itself seven times and that's gonna give you seven sixes. So in this case, you get x to the six times seven, which is equal to x to the 42. So power to a power is what it was always called when I took and what was math three, algebra two. So in looking here, what we're gonna do first is use that property right over here on the left side. So two to the four to the x is gonna be two to the four times x. And of course, on the right side, we'll still have two to the fifth. Now the idea here of getting common bases was that once the bases are the same, we can just equate the powers. So it's almost like you're saying you can get rid of the bases themselves. Again, later we'll learn the operation to do that. But for us, the important part is since the bases are the same, the powers have to be the same. And lo and behold, if 4x equals 5, we can divide both sides by 4. And we can get that x is equal to 5 fourths. And there is the power that will get us to have this equation be true. So once again, what you're seeing happen here is we're gonna to try to decompose. That just means break it down into a simple base. We're gonna decompose each side of the equation, use exponent rules wherever necessary, and then once those bases are the same, or common bases have been achieved, we're gonna set the powers equal to one another and solve for x. So there it was in a pretty clean first example. Our second problem, also set up pretty nicely here. Not too, not too bad, not too shabby, I'd say. We have 25 to the x equals 1 fifth. Now there's some other exponent stuff going on here. This is a really well put together essential skills quiz, quiz model. But basically we have sort of 25 and 1 fifth to sort of think about. The first thing I want to point out is that 1 fifth is definitely going to be a power of 5. Specifically though, because of the 1 over, the reciprocal nature that's here, we need a negative exponent. And in particular, since 1 fifth is the same thing as 1 over 5 to the first power, this is the same thing as 5 to the negative 1. Likewise, and you surely already knew this one, but I'll do it for completion's sake, 25, setting that weirdness aside, 25 is equal to 5 to the second. So once again, we have a base 5 and a base 5, so we have common bases if we decompose it or break it down in just the right way. So over here, let's do that. 25 to the x is gonna be equal to 1 fifth, which is five to the negative one. 
And as we saw, 25 is 5 to the second. From here, just like we did in the last one, I'm going to use that power to a power property. So that left side is going to be 5 to the 2 times x. Of course, it's going to equal 5 to the negative 1. And then just like before, once those bases are the same, we can, in a sense, set them aside. The powers have to be equal for this to be true. So in other words, we're going to get that 2x is equal to negative 1. And if we divide both sides by 2, we are going to get that x is equal to negative 1 half. And there is our solution. So again, we use the same properties as we did on the first problem in this little section. But the difference was here we did have a negative exponent to navigate with. So a little bit trickier, a little extra wrinkle to toss in there. The next one we run to is 10c. We have 8 to the x times 8 to the fifth equals 64. And now in this one, you actually have a couple different options. And I'm going to show you both of them just for the sake of completion. But what I'm noticing here, just as I think about it, is the fact that 64 is equal to 8 squared. So seeing all those 8s on the left side of the equation, my thought is let's break this down into powers of 8. So let's do it. So on the left side, we have 8 to the x times 8 to the fifth. And on the right side, we have 8 to the second. So good start for sure, but you know there's a couple different options for where we can go from here. And the, truthfully, as I said, there's two ways to start it from the beginning. There's actually two ways to go from here as well. So let's start with sort of the cleanest method. I think the cleanest method would be to use the exponent rule. So basically the way I learned it was x to the m times x to the n is equal to x to the m times n. And you can see that a little more clearly with x to the 4 times x to the 3 is going to equal x to the 4 plus 3, also known as x to the 7th. Now again, thinking about why that would be true, x to the 4th means x, 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 x. So we get 4 x's, then we get 3 more x's. How many total x's do you end up with? Well, naturally you get 7 of them. Hence why we end up with x to the 7th. So if we approach this problem that way, we could of course take this equation rewrite it as 8 to the power plus power. So in other words, 8 to the x plus 5 is equal to 8 squared. And just like before, we can drop the 8s. So we can focus on the powers. Again, we'll learn how later. Then we'll get x plus 5 equals 2. And then from here, pretty simple solving path from there. We're going to end up with x being equal to negative 3. So we get our answer pretty quickly. So that is method one, I'd want to call it, like method one. But in truth, there was another way we could have gone from right here. So this is a little bit less traditional. Like, I'm not going to lie. I know this is less traditional. But basically, there's another way that we can make this work using some exponent properties. And again, I think the first way is exactly how I do it naturally. But there are other possibilities out there. And I want to put that out there just in case you might see it this way. So what I'm going to do in the second case is I'm going to divide both sides by 8 to the fifth power. Now you might ask yourself, why in the world would I do that? Like that's just a strange way to approach it. And yeah, you're right. I could see that. But my idea is this. Once we've divided that out, we get 8 to the x on the left. And on the right, we have 8 to the second over 8 to the fifth. And the exponent rule for that, again, following some of those old patterns, x to the m over x to the n is equal to x to the m minus n. So like the last one, you ended up with a bunch adding together, basically, like how many different individual factors you end up with. Here you get some of those factors to divide out and to make ones. And you end up with the difference. So that means on the right side up here, we have 8 to the 2, sorry, 2 minus 5, which means the right side is 8 to the negative 3. And now you probably see it too. 8 to the x equals 8 to the negative 3. Well, they have the same base we literally end up with x to the negative 3 again. So of course we end up with the same correct answer. Of course that was the point, but sort of a different pathway, sort of a clever way to approach this one. So there is sort of a second option you have. Now in addition, there is one more way we could approach this entire thing. And again, I, I don't think this is the way people are probably going to go, but it was actually the first thing I saw when I looked at this problem, if I'm being honest. I just thought to break it down even further. What that is focuses on the fact that 8 is equal to 2 to the third power. And likewise, 64, and I should give us a little bit of space here to see this, 64 is 2 to the sixth power. 
Now the reason I bring this up is that we can decompose this entire expression into powers of two. Just because two is a little bit smaller, sometimes that's the way you go. So if we look over at our equation here, we're gonna get two to the third, that's eight, to the x, times two to the third to the fifth, that would be eight to the fifth, and then finally equals two to the sixth. And again, we've got a couple extra rules here. You can see this one is not the fast way to do the problem, but we've got a power to a power, so that's gonna be two to the three times x. On the next one, we also have a power to a power, so right there we're gonna have two to the three times five, and then of course it's equal to two to the sixth. Taking this one step further, three times five is 15, three times x is obviously three x, and then we have two to a power times two to a power. You can rewrite this as two to the three x plus 15, equals two to the sixth. And then we end up in a familiar end game. The bases are the same, so we can equate the powers. Three x plus 15 equals six. We can start doing some solving work. Subtract 15 on both sides. We get three x equals negative nine. And as you can see, this is not the efficient way to get to the answer. But what's important to remember is that just because it's not efficient doesn't mean it's not correct. Totally the correct way to do the problem. There's not one correct way to do this, it just depends on what you see. And that's something I'd always encourage you to think about as you're working through problems, whether they're fairly simple common base stuff like this, they're not too simple, but pretty simple, or there's something more complicated, like just because you're doing it differently than someone else doesn't mean that you're doing it wrong. Here are three ways to handle this problem. So, and again, would I do the third one? Um, yeah, I probably would, I like seeing it turn out, but no, the first method is totally the fastest way. So, but hey, you be you. The fourth one we're gonna look at, problem 10D. Um, this one actually brings us directly into contact with a couple of rules that we've seen before, including on the last one, that sort of alternate method um, dividing two different power expressions. So we have 12 to the x over 12 to the nine equals one over 144. And there's a couple things that I see here. The first one is that 144 is 12 squared. It's 12 times 12. In fact, I think that was the first like 12 fact I really had memorized when I was in like third grade, I wanna say. But in any event, 144 is 12 to the second. Likewise, since I didn't define it real closely on the last one, we have an exponent rule. X to the M over X to the N, it's gonna be X to the M minus N. And again, if you're thinking about why that would be, if we do X to the fifth over X to the second, that's the same thing as X to the five minus two or X to the third. Now, if you're wondering why that is, just to kind of visualize it, x to the fifth is the product of five x's, and x to the second is two x's. Notice that two of those x's divide out, we're left with one, two, three of them at the end. So there's the exponent rule in action. So just like before though, I'm gonna to try to decompose this as much as possible. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use that property we just looked at on the right side. So 12 to the x over 12 to the nine is going to be the same thing as 12 to the x minus nine. And then on the right side, we have one over 144. Well, we know that 144 is going to be 12 squared, but this is one over, it's, the reciprocal has been taken. So we need to use a negative exponent. So on the right side, we're going to get, I mean, I guess you could do first one over 12 squared, but then we're gonna take it one step further here. 12 to the x minus nine is gonna be equal to 12 to the negative two. And now once again, we reach that place. We have achieved common bases, which means we can sort of pretend the bases aren't even there. So the 12s can be set aside, and we'll learn why later. That leaves us with x minus nine equals negative two. And then from here, I'm going to add nine to both sides. We've sort of transformed this from an exponential equation with some trickiness to it into a really simple algebraic equation. Ta -da! So x equals seven turns out to be the value. So once again, we saw an exponent property pop its head up. We also saw some decomposition and a negative exponent again, some familiar pieces for sure. And last but not least, we have seven to the x to the 10th equals 343. Now, looking at this, I actually think that the hardest part about this particular problem is actually not the stuff on the left side. Seven to the x to the 10, I think you already know, is gonna be seven to the x times 10, which is the same thing as seven to the 10x. 
I don't foresee you having a lot of problems there, especially if you've done the first couple problems. The bigger issue here is the 343. Now, I know what that is from experience, but you might not know what it is. So the question would be, if you're not sure, how do you approach this? Do you just go, nope, not going to do that one? Or do you try to sort of reason it out? And I think, I, I would hope, reasoning it out is a reasonable way to do this. So here's what I'm thinking. We've got 7 on the left side, and there's nothing else we can break that 7 down to. It is 7 as its base. So the question for us is, what power of 7 is 343? Now later on, you'll actually get an operation for doing this, although you still have to kind of know it. But basically, let's just think about some stuff here. So 7 to the 0 is 1. 7 to the 1 is 7. I mean, not, no surprises here. 7 to the 2nd is 49. Now the question would be then, what is 7 to the 3rd? Because I'm willing to bet it's 343. But let's find out. So 49 times 7. So I'm curious how many of you would multiply it out this way. Like this is one way to do it, obviously. 7 times 9 is 63. 7 times 4 is 28. Plus 6 is 34. So we do get 343. As a heads up though, secret, secret note. Here's how I multiply this much faster. Not that you asked. You didn't ask. You can't ask. I'm in the past. But uh, you're in the future, however you want to think about it. Boom. I swear it's faster to do it that way. You can probably even do it in your head. But yeah, I'm in the weeds a little bit here. Where were we? What was the point? We now know for sure that 7 to the 3rd is 343. Or 343 is 7 to the 3rd. That means we can go write this as 7 to the x times 10 equals 7 to the 3rd. Or 7 to the 10x equals 7 to the 3rd. And then we arrive at that familiar place. We're back in the happy place. 10x is 3, so divide by 10, and we're going to get that x is equal to 3 tenths. Voila. So yeah, it took a little bit of exploring. If you didn't know your powers of 7, then you're not alone. I, I don't know them all off the top of my head, although I was pretty certain that's what this one was. But again, a little bit of experimentation, a little bit of arithmetic gets you right through there. So having said that, we've looked at common bases. Turns out common bases is not actually a difficult technique, but it does require you to know and be pretty flexible in using and implementing your exponent rules. So basically, there they are. We got to see power to power. We saw negative exponents. We saw the addition as well as the subtraction properties. And then we saw some weird powers. But speaking of weird, it's weird that it's 8 o'clock in the middle of the summer and I'm still staring at the common basis problems. So I'm going to call it a night. As with the previous videos, thank you so much for watching. Hope these have been really helpful and useful resources for you. But if not, there's nothing I can do about it. It's July 2nd. So have a great rest of your day. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.